Good evening and welcome to the Blue Hope Bash. One nation forward. Oh, Michael. Good evening and welcome to the Blue Hope Bash. One nation forward. Maybe. Good evening and welcome to the Blue Hope Bash. One. Oh. Hello? Uh, Mike, you got, you got to go. The show starts in five. Oh, gosh. Good evening and welcome to the Blue Hope Bash. One nation forward. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Blue Hope Bash, One Nation Forward. I'm Michael Sapienza, the CEO of the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. And I'm Craig Melvin. Uh, hopefully, you know me from a, a New York-based television program called The Today Show. Uh, perhaps maybe you watch MSNBC or Dateline, uh, but I've also been the MC of this wonderful Blue Hope Bash since 2017, and I was also very honored to join the Colorectal Cancer Alliance's board of directors last year. So um, it's, it's, been, it's been an amazing year. In fact, one could contend uh, wild times we've, we've been through these past 22 months, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, and for all of the folks who have managed to get out of their houses for the first time in a year and some change, you look great. You haven't put on any pounds. It was wonderful. Uh, and for those of you watching at home tonight in your basement and in your pajamas, you also look great. And we want to thank you for joining us uh, from the comfy confines of your homes uh, and for all of the folks who joined it out as well. A big thank you as well to our very small uh, studio audience. Uh, being among a few of our amazing allies uh, beats him seeing the bash from my home basement last year. It was great, quite frankly, because if you watched last year, I was, I was business from the waist up, but from the, from the waist down, it was all a party. Um, but this year, I had to put on my full suit. But it's an honor to gather with you all tonight, near and far, Michael. Yeah, let's give Craig a big round of applause. I, I too, also want to thank everyone uh, for being with us this evening. We are One Nation Moving Forward. And for those of you that don't know, the Colon Cancer Alliance or the Colorectal Cancer Alliance is the nation's leading nonprofit focused on ending this disease. Our vision is a world free of colorectal cancer. Yes. We have a strategy to realize that vision. We have a truly remarkable staff dedicated to seeing it through, and we have our nation of allies, supporters here and across the country, you. Tonight, we're asking for your commitment and your leadership so we can get ahead of this disease. Your support inspires, improves, and advocates for our community. And Craig, we're starting this Blue Hope Bash with a bang. Um, I'm excited to announce that the Twyla Sampson Family Foundation has just committed a $25,000 matching gift okay. to kick off the night. Okay. Yes. We are, of course, grateful for their support and encourage everyone here tonight and all across the country to give generously to help us realize every penny of this pending matching gift. We are on our way. It's now up to the rest of our allies, all of you again, to help us reach our $1 million goal tonight. All you need to do is take a photo of the QR code on the bottom lower right hand of your screen, or for those in the audience here today, you saw the, 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 the cards on your seats. We should mention the QR code, by the way, that's right here. It's like, yeah, it's right there. Take out your phone, you open the camera app, and you put it up. You'd be surprised how many people struggle with this QR code technology. That's how the QR code works. So there it is, right there. If you're, if you're scrolling at home, um, Mr. Sapiens, that, that is absolutely fantastic. As you know, uh, for folks in the room, for those of you who are watching uh, from home, uh, for many folks here, the cause is deeply personal. Uh, for me, it was my brother Lawrence Meadows in 
2017, he was diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. He was just 39. This picture was uh, from the Blue Hope Bash in 2019. He was on the stage. Uh, he was a Baptist minister. He was an entrepreneur. And we lost him to colon cancer in December of last year, December 9th. He was just 43. And my family directly benefited from the care and the support that this alliance is so very well known for. And since his diagnosis, I have uh, become a national advocate and ally uh, for the alliance. And, and Michael, I, I know it's personal for you as well. In fact, the argument could be made that a lot of folks in this room wouldn't be here had it not been from, for your experience with this dreadful disease. Yeah, well first, Craig, I just want to say um, our family of alliance and allies across the country are thinking about you, Lindsay, Lawrence's family, et cetera. And you know, as Craig said, for me, um, when my mom died from colorectal cancer 12 years ago on Mother's Day, you know, it was a powerful emotion took hold of me. And it was really an uncompromising, fervent desire to stop the pain that I saw my mom going through. So literally out of my parents' basement in Burke, Virginia, we founded the Chris for Life Colon Cancer Foundation, named after my mom, Chris. Eventually merged with the Colon Cancer Alliance in 2016, which most of you know now is the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. We have grown to a staff of 50, 55 and an annual budget of almost 15 million and a slate of patient-focused programs. Yes, yes. A, a slate of patient-focused programs concentrating on screen, care, and cure. So we touch every aspect of one's colorectal cancer journey. Through the generosity of supporters just like you, we have been able to do the following. This is just incredible. We've been able to serve nearly 2 million patients and caregivers. We've actually navigated 2 million. We've been able to match 4,400 patients and their families through our buddy program. We've invested $5 million in research, including two projects that won multi-million dollar grants from the NIH because of our seed funding. And we've provided 4,100 Blue Hope Financial Assistance Awards, including the full cost of more than 1,000 colonoscopies. And in the last year during COVID, we reached over 45 million people with our screening during COVID awareness campaign, which drove to more than 10,000 people to get the process of screening started. Successes like that uh, make me so very proud to be a board member of this incredible organization and an ally in the fight um, as well. So, what do you say? Let's get started. Uh, and let's do it with a few of our friends. How about we do that? Uh, Bashir Sylvain and actress comedian Nisi Nash. Hello. <laughs> as you know, uh, my wife Shannon. Uh, she passed away from colorectal cancer, and one of her major goals is to bring awareness to the African-American community. And today we're gonna play a little game called Two Facts and a Lie, and Nisi's gonna be our contestant. Uh-oh. Uh, yep, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Common symptoms of colorectal cancer are the following. A, vomiting, B, blood in your stool, or C, no symptoms. The lie is See no symptoms? Actually, um, the lie is vomiting. Vomiting, although is a rare symptom, oh, but yeah. most importantly, that's why they call colorectal cancer a silent killer, because a lot of the times it has no symptoms whatsoever. That's what makes it extremely dangerous. I'm gonna tell you something, Bashir, Sylvain. I was today years old when I found <laughs> out that it was called the silent killer. Second question, second question, all right. So, African Americans are, you know, we are, we're the most affected on this disease. So, African Americans are 5%, so this is gonna be a math question, all right? Oh, So, let, let's, let's literally pay attention. Listen, guys, it's, in it's my okay. defense, in my defense, I didn't do that well in math, but <laughs> bear with me. African Americans are either 5% more likely to develop colorectal cancer and 20% more likely to die from, from this disease, or, 20% more likely to develop colorectal cancer and 40% more likely to die from this disease, or 30% more likely to develop colorectal cancer and 20% more likely to die. One of them is a lie? Yes. 
Hey, my final answer. Actually, it's 20%. 20, uh, the, the truth is, is 20% more likely to develop colorectal cancer and 40% more likely to die from other groups. Which um, means that we gotta be up with the screening. Yes. All right, last question is, okay, we're gonna talk about screening. You just brought it up. This is what we're gonna bring. Okay. Uh, proven ways to prevent colorectal cancer are regular screening starting at the age of 45 or earlier, according to your doctor's recommendation, knowing your family medical history, or drinking a lot of water or raising your vegetable consumption. I'm gonna go with C is the last. Okay, winner. Okay, winner. Although having a healthy diet does help. It okay. does help but it's not the, the most effective way to prevent it. You, have, gotta, you gotta get that test. You, you have gotta to get know that your test. family history. Exactly, and if you find out that your family history has it, this is definitely important to at least get the screening. Do you know who hasn't had it? Who? Uh oh, guess what? That's what we're here, and that's you're gonna do it, right? It, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what? But but you're not you're not 45 though. You're like 100. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you if you have the recommendation Listen, to be there or what. Back to your regular program. <laughs> oh. And, and she's not 35 yet. That's the thing. Uh, here's the thing: we can't talk about ending colorectal cancer in our lifetimes if we do not talk about the disparities in healthcare. And Bashir is here actually today in the audience. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you for being here, Bashir. So disparities in healthcare exist for many reasons. And the top one, unfortunately, is systemic racism leading to reduced access to and trust in the medical system. Differences in access to timely, high-quality treatment, implicit bias among healthcare providers, and compounding medical conditions. Black Americans are, get this, 20% more likely to get colorectal cancer, and we're 40% more likely to die from it. And our friends in the Hispanic community are also at risk from, from low screening rates. Bias and issues of health inequity are all around us, even where you may not suspect. A prestigious science lab. Here, molecules are under the microscope. This is where colorectal cancer treatments are discovered. It's where screening tests are developed, far away from the problems we face as a society. Racism, prejudice, bias, inequality. These issues cannot penetrate the walls of this sterile room. Or can they? Historian Arthur Schlesinger once said, science and technology revolutionize our lives but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. In colorectal cancer, clinical trials play an important part in developing new treatments, screenings, and interventions. Clinical trials tell us if a medicine or screening test works. And while Black Americans make up more than 13% of the U.S. population, they only comprise 5% of trial participants. That is an example of a health disparity. The Alliance is paying attention. Here is Allie Miller, our Senior Director of Community Engagement. I know people who are only alive because they were on a clinical trial, and it's excruciating to think about that same advantage not being easily accessible for everybody. And then there's Dr. Megan Hitchens, a Colorectal Cancer Alliance-funded researcher. From her Cedar sinai lab, she's developing a new screening test for people under age 50. To address health disparities, She's using a more diverse set of samples in research funded by the National Institutes of Health. She's moving forward research catalyzed by the Alliance's early funding. By including more diverse samples, including those from Black Americans, she can ensure the screening test works as well for them as anyone else. A new screening test that works as well for Black people as it does for white people. That's one way we're moving forward toward more equitable health care. The Alliance is committed as you guys remember, last year I talked about this and I made a commitment on behalf of the Colorectal Cancer Alliance to make sure that we play our part to build more equitable healthcare opportunities for all. One of our biggest steps forward came earlier this year when we announced a $2.4 million investment by three of our industry partners to address health disparities in colorectal cancer. 
So through our patient family support programs, we offer free screenings, financial assistance, and patient navigation to help underserved communities. But this is just the beginning. With our recent focus on health equity, we can do the following. We can reduce those barriers to screening, care, and clinical trials slash research. We can build and nurture community re outreach and trust and generate new approaches to saving lives in these high need communities. And while it's just the beginning, we've already seen proof that it's working. In fact, one example is a Tennessee man, his name's Donnie, and Donnie got checked after hearing about the free screening test from the Alliance. So, so this is Donnie, I think we've got a picture of Donnie. There's Donnie right there. So he knew about the dangers of colorectal cancer because a pair of his cousins had been diagnosed with it. In fact, Donnie said, quote, there are rumors that if you don't feel like you have cancer, then don't get screened. But you can't detect cancer by a feel, and screening doesn't hurt. That's what Donnie said. Donnie got checked and was quite relieved to learn that he was okay. Yeah, Craig, knowing your status provides peace of mind, and knowing your status means getting screened, right? Because screening is the number one way to prevent this disease. It is the most preventable cancer that there is in our country. So this message is not making it to the communities that need to hear it most. But with your support, we continue. We can continue spreading this message, supporting the community, and saving lives. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, we're not working alone. Can't go from your T-M-O And she's so awesome so Baby, don't you know I can sing rap dance in just one show Cause I'm can't go Mr. Sophisticator That's Kangol Kid from the pioneering hip-hop group UTFO. The year was 1985. A B-side called Roxanne Roxanne earned the four-piece fame. But it was when fairy tale lover turned that head spun. The rapper started to sing. In doing so, UTFO broke boundaries, changed the conversation, and moved music forward. Now, after a recent diagnosis with stage three colon cancer, the 54-year-old Kangle is changing the conversation around colorectal cancer, again, using the power of his voice. At that point, I said, okay, stop playing Kang, go to the hospital, go see a doctor. He aims to challenge the way many black men deal with this disease, which he told the Alliance is with silence and suck it up attitudes. The new look for hip hop and cancer is to go get yourself checked out before it happens. Kang's message is important. It's timely. And we stand with him as he continues his journey. So I, I, want, I want to emphasize that silence piece there that you just heard, because there continues to be a real stigma in the black community when it comes to colorectal cancer. And it is putting lives at risk every day. People need to get checked. Yeah, it's especially prevalent as we've been talking about in the black community, but we see stigma everywhere. So everywhere, right? When's the last time you've seen a celebrity talk about colorectal cancer? Yes, the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman brought us into the limelight, but it still, we know the devastation caused by this disease is amplified by this silence. But we can beat silence and we can reject this stigma. We just need to be loud. You know, I have never been more hopeful for the future of the Alliance or for the end of colorectal cancer. What we have not developed, however, is a time machine or a way to stop the clock. It continues to tick, and we continue to lose our loved ones every single day. To remember them, here is a good friend of the Alliance. Hi, I'm Marjorie Lee, and Angelina McIntyre was one of my best friends. For 43 years, Angelina was a bright light in the lives of many. She was the strongest person I've ever known. On her boat, on a dance floor, even in a hospital room, she never let colorectal cancer take control. Still, this disease took her like it takes 50,000 people every year. We remember them in our hearts. Across the nation, loved ones left in the wake of colorectal cancer People like me remember when their loved ones were still here and we're reminded why we carry on the mission of ending this disease. We do it for them. We remember Vinny's smile even when treatment got rough, but Vinny was tough and he inspired countless people with his story. At 17, he probably skateboarded into heaven. 
We think about Paula's tenacity in the face of this disease. Even after more than 60 chemotherapy treatments, Paula never let this disease get the best of her. We recall that Kevin never got sick, not for a single day, until colon cancer came. When it did, he unfolded his well-traveled wings and helped as many people as he could. We look back on Joy's determination to advocate for people and our four-legged friends. Her service, kindness, and passion are missed across communities and causes. Most of us remember someone, Michelle, Lawrence, Chris, Bill, Mark, and many more loved ones. Loss is hard to bear, but we have a chance to turn pain into purpose and ensure that the light that shine from beautiful people like my friend Angelina will never burn out. Together, we can move forward. We can end this disease for them. May our allies and loved ones rest in peace. We will never forget those that we have lost to this disease. Angelina and Lawrence, my mom, Michelle, and others. And those of you who've been at the bash for many years and have followed 17-year-old Vinnie Robbins knows that we lost him in August. It's been a really difficult year for the Alliance. And I just want to take a moment to recognize Jackie and Eli. Jackie is Vinnie's mother, and Eli is Vinny's twin brother. Please send them love and strength this evening. You know, if you've lost a loved one to colon cancer, I want you to know that we are committed again and again and again to ending this disease, just as much as we are for those who are surviving. For Vinny, for Lawrence, for my mom, for Angelina, for Michelle, for others, for the 55,000 other people, Americans, that will die from colon cancer this year, please help support us tonight. The QR code, again, is at the right, as Craig said, <laughs> the bottom of your screen. And we really, really hope, in memory of all of these amazing individuals, that you will help us get to our goal of a million dollars. Thank you. I think about uh, my brother every day. And those of you who have lost someone to this dreadful disease, uh, you know that uh, you, don't, you don't get over it. You learn how. Uh, to deal with it. And uh, from his experience, I know that, that, that when you are diagnosed with colorectal cancer, few things are more important than getting accurate information about your disease, accurate information about treatment, and about survivorship as well. Colorectal cancer is not one size fits all, so a patient's care shouldn't be one size fits all. Like so many things, with colorectal cancer, knowledge is power. Keep your eyes on the horizon and keep moving forward. That's what pioneers do. My name is Jessica. I'm 38 years old. I'm a wife and a proud mom to a Girl Scout, a speedster, and Brennan, my youngest, just built a catapult in our backyard. My husband, Justin, calls me scrappy. I do call her scrappy. She's really scrappy. Because in cancer, when your back is up against the wall, it's good to always keep looking forward and always be ready for the next move. A person's cancer treatment is a lot like following their own roadmap. Deciding how you navigate that, what route you take, is really up to you and your team. One of the most important things that I tell people is that they need to get their biomarkers tested. Every day we are learning that these little biomarkers make a huge difference in your path forward. Each tumor is unique and I'm learning about all kinds of things now that have helped me live longer. They're discovering that some of these biomarkers exist in multiple types of cancer and I could look across and see what research was happening all over the world and how they were making progress and it could help my disease too. 
When I first learned about my biomarkers, they were really confusing because it's just a sequence of letters and numbers that make it seem like a foreign language. So that is where forums like Ally to Ally, where peers interact with each other, are important. I feel like the more patients that we can empower by telling them to get their biomarkers tested, the better outcomes people will have. I am a proud three-time clinical trial participant. Being part of a clinical trial is a lot like being a pioneer because when the pioneers came out to California, they didn't know what they were going for. They just left where they were and went and hoped that they would find something better. And I have been so fortunate that my biomarker specific treatment has helped me live so much longer. I know I am alive today because of biomarker testing. When I was given my diagnosis, I was given only two years to live and that was over four years ago. I really believe that what happened yesterday doesn't determine today or what will happen tomorrow. I just keep doing my best every single day, keep my eyes on the horizon, and keep going forward. Jessica is an incredible ally of the Alliance. You know, in hospitals, doctors get about 15 minutes. You know, before or earlier, I'm just gonna break off script for a second, and Dr. Marshall was, was gonna maybe get mad at me, because in the script it says, in hospitals, doctors get about two minutes <laughs> with, their, with their patients on average, and I said, well, I think Dr. Marshall get mad at me. So, in hospitals, doctors get about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes with their patients on average. You know, that's not enough time to give patients all the information they need to get ahead of colon cancer and improve outcomes. You know, some patients aren't even told about your, their biomarkers. You heard Jessica talking about this. You know, and just so you guys know, a biomarker is the precise makeup of your tumor that allows your oncologist to target your tumor with specific therapies that could save your life. The very medical advancements that continues to save Jessica's because patients are individuals. They need individualized precision medicine and our solution is called the Precision Platform. Hi, I'm Andrea Goodman, the Alliance's Vice President of Patient Support and Research Strategy. I know those sound like different things, but the fact is providing patients with superior support requires knowing what they really need in the first place. You use patient information to get research answers and you understand the research to offer the best response. These days, patients and caregivers turn to the web to understand their diagnosis and treatment options. But as you know, the internet is filled with inaccuracies, misleading statements, and wild stuff that's just plain wrong. Plus, few sites cater to specific groups or profiles of patients, let alone care about each person. This is how the internet sees you, but the Alliance sees you like this. The question we set out to answer is, what does a patient-centered, personalized, and functional tool in the digital world look like? Further, is there a way to learn from those who use the tool to move forward faster in our mission to end this disease? We met with doctors, patients, industry leaders, and advocates. We listened, and this is some of what we heard. There's a huge inconsistency between, this is gonna be easy, no problem, versus what Google shows you, and then you don't know what to believe. And that's the frustration is you end up just being confused. That was, that was, the, well, that was the worst part of it. Whatever group I'm connecting with, these are great services, but they tend to be like white women who seem to have some money. So I just think that these types of resources and this information is really important to get out to other communities as well. Over the last several months, we've been developing what's called the Precision Platform. It's a one-stop shop where patients can easily and equitably access personalized information and services. These are previews. Free to all who need it, the mobile-friendly experience will provide peer support channels and support groups, use artificial intelligence to match individual users with personalized resources, 
including the right treatment and survivorship information for them when they need it most, and feature support services such as a live navigator and clinical trial matching. We'll also collect data to personalize their experience, but also identify trends among users. With this tool, we expect that patients will live longer with a higher quality of life by being armed with advanced knowledge about their specific cancer. We're moving forward and planning for a 2022 launch. And so, so here's the thing, this precision platform, this is a tool that should help counter medical misunderstandings and, and misinformation. And perhaps we could maybe take it into the general population as well and use it for some other things. But for now, we're just gonna focus it on, on fighting uh, colorectal cancer. But part of, I, the, one of the reasons I love the Alliance so much is because this is another example of them supporting patients at every turn. As you just heard, this is a project that is underway as we speak with Michael. A lot of folks in this room, a lot of folks who are watching right now, probably wondering, how are you gonna pay for it? Yeah, that's a good question, Craig. I just wanna say something, though, about the Precision Platform. You know, we've been trying to learn about this and really doing our due diligence over the last year or so. And I will say to you, we will be the first nonprofit slash cancer slash healthcare organization to do this, right? We will be the first ones. Innovative, exciting, we'll find patients where they are. So how great this project becomes, how innovative it is, how life-saving it can be, a lot of that is up to our supporters like you. How much are you willing to invest in the Alliance tonight to help that, in our health equity programs, in our precision platform? All right, so let's see where we are with fundraising. Oh, I love the fundraising music that we have too, by the way. This, I was times. told we were at 890. I was told we were at 890, and I want to give a big thanks. Reagan just came up and said, thank you to Rich and Katie Confalone. They just gave $30,000. So a wow. big round of applause to them. Please keep giving, guys. We've got to get to one million by the end of this program. So we're at 890 right now. That's I, where we are. That's what I was told. So okay. I don't know why this is 890, 830. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. We got a ways to go, but there's still time, right? Yes, absolutely. We can do much better. So again, QR code on the bottom of your screen. Those of you that are here in the audience, you have those pieces of paper in front of you. So thank you so very much. Um, all of this so far, all 890,000 plus. It is an incredible statement of, of community, Michael Sapiens. Uh, let's, for a moment, talk just a little bit about this community. Over the last few months, the Alliance has been collecting photos, photos submitted by our allies. And these are pictures that depict the, the small and the large things that help move them forward through their colorectal cancer journey. Online voting happened, and now, celebrity photographer and colon cancer survivor himself, David Needleman, introduces our finalists. Good evening, Blue Hope Bash. I'm David Needleman. I'm a photographer and 13-year colon cancer survivor as well. I'm so glad I could join you tonight. When I'm taking someone's portrait, no matter whether they're a big celebrity or close friend, I hope to create a moment of truth. For me, it's about having that intent come through in the picture, maybe a feeling, a thought, a story, or just an honest and beautiful moment. In these inspiring moments, we can be moved. The Alliance's photo contest celebrates the people, places, and things that provide strength, comfort, or the will to move forward through a cancer diagnosis. Entries were gathered over the last couple months. The Alliance community voted, and these are our finalists. Pay attention because you will be voting for the winner shortly. In no particular order, our finalists are. Tiffany Blackley Brown with Fight. Tiffany's photo caption is simple. She had to fight through her diagnosis. Serena Mello Chu with First Sunset After Treatment. Serena tells us that at the end of the day, it was her and her body against colorectal cancer and patients need to thank themselves, their minds and their bodies for being strong. Joey Armendariz with Push Myself at Zion. Joey says his hike through Zion National Park's narrowest trail made him feel alive and overwhelmed with accomplishment and gratitude to be able to push himself with no regrets. 
Amanda Webb with this little guy. Amanda says Levi is the reason doctors found her stage four colon cancer when she was 31 weeks pregnant. Amanda is undergoing treatment while on maternity leave, and Levi is her reason for moving forward. Tanya Sheehan with Living Life to the Fullest. That's how Tanya described her dad who battled stage four colon cancer for 55 months. Along the way, he made amazing memories and never gave up hope for a cure. I love each of these photographs, but now it's up to you to choose the winner. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you, David. My, I, I, I like them all. I don't know how we're gonna choose a winner. Yeah, me neither. I think, you know, that's the best part. Uh, we don't. That's <laughs> up to the audience here and at home. Do, does the winner get a prize? Oh, Craig, yes, they do. They get a call from yours truly. You're gonna call him? No, we'll have you call the winner, you know, and, and, and that's, like, what, that's oh, what they get. Like, literally, that's the like, prize. Yeah, I, I, I'm that's, sorry. I, I, I call money, it. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on getting them something in addition to that phone call. Uh, I, I like that. I'm, I'm ready. Uh, how, do, how do viewers start voting, if people who are watching at home? Yeah, so to vote for your favorite picture, shoot the QR code that's on your screen or go to the website. We'll have the voting open, I think, for about 10 minutes. So it's time to vote now. All this QR code stuff, it's like I'm, I'm part of the Today Show. It's like steals and deals up here. <laughs> uh, while we are waiting for the voting to finish, might be a cool time for you to announce the other big thing. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure I can, actually. Yes, you can. Oh, I can? <laughs> Give him a sneak peek. Give him a little something, something. Uh, OK, well, I'm not really supposed to say much until we launch, but I can say that our plans started with a vision with a large vision from one of our board members, Brooks Bell, who is also in the audience today. As a young onset colon cancer survivor, she was extremely disturbed by the lack of awareness around this disease. So she suggested that we need to rethink our attitudes and our entire brand around colon cancer itself. So she, she wants to call it something else, change the name, or? Not really, but if you can change how people perceive colon cancer in general, that stigma that we've been talking about. It, it makes every other problem, the prevention, the access, the funding, and research much, much easier. All right, my interest is piqued. What more, what more can you tell us? So, you know, Brooks and I, we found ourselves in Hollywood with an A-list celebrity to help us create a new initiative to get the message out that colon cancer is the most preventable cancer or the preventable cancer. This bigwig and his team are committed to doing everything they can to help raise awareness of colon cancer and how to prevent it. A-list celebrity, Hollywood. Who is it? <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't tell you. I really, really want to, but my team literally will kill me, Craig. Yes, okay. And they will, the A-list celebrity will as well. But um, we do have a couple of I, 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 don't, I won't, I don't, I'm not gonna get anybody in trouble. But, but Michael, when he says A-list, like it is legit A-list. Like it's not one of those things where you're like, oh, A-list, and they're really like B or C-list. No, this, this is an A-list celebrity. Yes, absolutely, not really, but of course, we do have a couple friends that- Superstar. Superstar, oh, totally, super, okay. <laughs> getting close, getting close. A Couple friends that can add a little sliver more. Hi everyone, I'm Trey Mancini with the Baltimore Orioles and a colon cancer survivor. And I am Gianna Babatunde Bay, president of the Will and Jada Smith Family Foundation and executive producer of J Bay Entertainment. We are delighted to be with you virtually tonight to share some really exciting news about a new initiative we've been working on with the Alliance that's going to make colon cancer famous. That's right, and this is big, and it's gonna happen in the next week or so. We can't tell you much about it before this big premiere, but this initiative is going to reach millions of people across the nation. Jana, I can't wait. This is going to be a major event, and more importantly, it's going to help the Alliance save lives. As many of you know, I might not be around today if it weren't for the colonoscopy I received as part of my annual physical for Major League Baseball. It is so important to listen to your body, be proactive, and get screened. Well, we certainly are grateful that you are still here, Trey. And by the way, congratulations on winning Comeback Player of the Year. Thank you so much, Jana. I really appreciate that. We want to encourage everyone watching tonight to support the Alliance. 
Giving today will help us reach as many people as possible with important information about colorectal cancer and how they can prevent it. That's right, and you can be a part of this. This is how we make colon cancer famous. Thank you for your donation at tonight's Blue Hope Bash. Enjoy your evening, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Right. Comeback Player of the Year and newly engaged, yes. Trey Mancini. So, um, congrats, congrats, Trey. It's all really great, Mr. Sapienza, and, and thanks for that sneak peek. But uh, when I said to announce one more thing, I was actually thinking a little bit more about the Porsche. Good thinking. Uh, before we do the raffle, let's check in on fundraising, Craig, one more time. We're grateful for every donor helping us. Um, you know, achieve our mission to end colorectal cancer. We are now okay. at 19,000. Thank you, everybody. You know, your commitment, yes, at home, in this room, your commitment to, we gotta get to a million within, I think, the next 10 minutes or ish, something yes. like that. So, you know, ensures that we focus on their journey and helps us save lives. Patients, survivors, and their families need our encouragement, guidance, and hope to face this disease. Your generosity tonight provides that. For them. Don't don't let that perfectly good QR code uh, underneath my right or left elbow go to waste. Use uh, the QR code. I, I love him seeing the bash, Michael. And and one of the reasons I enjoyed so much is this is a, a baby that you really have helped grow from the ground up, um, and and you've had a direct impact on people who need it most. Um, and I hope that you know how much you are appreciated by myself and the folks in this room and the folks who are watching at home. So thank you. thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. Um, and here's the thing. I love the next part, too. All right, the Porsche. Yeah, or, or, so, so we should point out, again, for folks who've done, oh, there's a picture. There's a picture. Um, so for folks who've been with us for a few years now, uh, this is the Porsche. Uh, this incredible vehicle donated by Lynn and Jay uh, Ferrero, every penny of each of the 1,250 tickets sold goes to moving our mission forward to end colorectal cancer in our lifetime. So Jay and Lynn, a big thanks to the $125,000 uh, that you have contributed. Incredible, longtime supporters, uh, these two. And what, what is it, the fourth or fifth year they've donated the yeah, portion? Yeah, this is the fifth year, which is, you know, the, totally, the total contributions probably now are half a million, if, if not more. So really, really incredible. All right. So I think most of you have probably bought a ticket. I'll turn it around a few times. By the way, Craig, that's it's 1,250 text messages I get. <laughs> people think that I win the port, just so you know. I can believe it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Are we ready for the phone call? Okay. All right, here's a tip. Maybe they'll actually be in the room. They're never in the I room. Know. Like every year we do this, whoever wins is never in the room. Oh, oh, they're not gonna be in the room because they're in California. Does anyone know a guy in Eureka, California named Thomas Snyder? Nope. Let's, let's call him. You, is that your, I don't wanna use my number. I don't want him calling me back. <laughs> if, all right, I'm not gonna, but let's see if, Thomas, let's see if he's awake. His penmanship is terrible. But we'll try. 503 area code. Wouldn't it be great if he's like day drinking? God, who sees? Maybe we should text him. No one ever answers the phone anymore. It's gonna get a great voicemail message, though. Wait up. Holy shit, he answered the phone. <laughs> Tom Thomas! Thomas, this is not a prank call. We're with the Colon Cancer Alliance. Uh, are you there? Well, let me see money. No, Thomas Snyder? Oh, is this the wrong number? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, no, it's the wrong number. Hang on a second. No, it's, no, it's weird. Sorry, uh, uh, never mind. I told you this pigment shit was terrible. Hang on. I think that was a seven. Sorry, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to try one more time. 
That poor guy. I'm <laughs> glad I didn't say, hey, buddy, you yeah, want a Porsche? Want a Porsche. <laughs> this is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Let's try this. I think this is the right number. Oh, God. We almost lost the entire alliance with one phone call. Come on, Thomas, save us. Thomas! Your call has been forwarded to <laughs> No one even has like a voicemail message anymore either. I'll leave, I'll leave a voicemail on behalf of the Alliance, is that okay? I, I'll, I'll need some help. Is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Thomas, uh, Craig Melvin here with the Colon Cancer Alliance. You bought a raffle ticket for a Porsche. Um, and there's some folks here in the room that on the count of three want to wish you congratulations. One, two, three. Congratulations. <laughs> Thomas, call this number back. You want a Porsche. Congrats. Answer your cell phone next time and leave a voicemail message. Like, record your own voice, dude. There you go. It's like 2021. All right, so Thomas gets a Porsche. Big whoopee for Thomas. Here's the thing, it's not over. We also get to announce the winner of the Rolex raffle. This is very exciting. There's a picture of said Rolex. Uh, this Rolex is a uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual Submariner. The value is $9,550, also given by Lynn and Jay Ferrero. Uh, with spe yes, yes. With a very special thanks to the retailer, uh, Lynn Quiston, uh, Lynn Quiston Beckstead. Uh, the winner of this amazing watch, ticket number 210, 210, check your ticket. Is April Sperlin here? She's probably in California. At She's at home. Mm -hmm. uh, April, congratulations. I know you're jumping up and down in your pajamas. Enjoy your Rolex. I'm glad that you got that save with the wrong number. Because yeah, that, that, that would have been done. really weird. So we have so many incredible supporters, um, and I'd like to invite Alliance board member and longtime Bash supporter, Avi Benayam, to the stage to say a few words. Avi! <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful time tonight at the Bash, and I hope you're ready to support the incredible organization. I put my own money into the Alliance because I believe in them. And I'm asking you to put money in with me because it's an investment into our future and our children's future. I'm so excited to announce that earlier this week, my good friend Julie Sands answered the call, and she has committed $100,000 as a gift towards tonight's bash in honor of her friend Carol. She is challenging all of you to give big tonight as well. Now that's an investment. Folks, if we can save one young life, there's no price tag on that. If we can raise awareness and save someone who might be walking around with colon cancer but doesn't even know it, then we've made it. We've done something. We've made a change in this world. But we have to act now. So please join Julie and me. I'm going to put up 10000 tonight, along with the investment that I put in all year, just to kick off some things. And I just, I'm really humbled tonight as I look around this room and I see so many of my friends that I've supported throughout the years in memory of Michelle. Michelle, I raise a toast to you, my dear. Cheers, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Avi. Yeah. You. Let's give Avi a round of applause. We love you, Avi. So where are we with fundraising right now? Stay here for a minute. Where are we with fundraising? Do we know where we are? Can we get an update? All right, are we still at, no, oh, 925. Come on. Oh, come on, oh, oh, wait, you're teasing us. I know. Something. All right, 925. 
All right, guys, so we have, you, what, it's uh, correct, five minutes. The QR, Ten minutes. Yeah, there we go, thank you. About five minutes to get ourselves another $60,000, $75,000. So give now, and let's give an, Avi another round of applause. We love yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, so we've, we've given away, oh, did he call back? No, he's not. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you? Who is this? I'll repeat your name again. Tom Snyder. Tom Snyder, everybody. <laughs> How did you come across the uh, Porsche raffle ticket? Well, I've been a uh, supporter of you guys for years after being diagnosed in 2016 with stage 3C. And this year, I was actually considered cured. My man. Amazing. You know what? Then you, uh, you earned that Porsche. And I, I hope you enjoy every mile that you drive, sir. Well, and thank you for everything you do for us all. Um, I mean, it's a tough battle, and I do everything I can to get out and talk to people and explain to them. This is amazing. Thank you all. Mr. Snyder, thank you, okay? Enjoy it. Thanks for calling back. Hey, and, and you know what? Get a voicemail message with your voice. Like, <laughs> use your own, don't use the Apple woman. That's, you've got a Porsche now, you should use your own voice. All right, be well. Be well, much love. What are the chances? They never call back. That's, That's awesome. cool. Yeah. That's cool. Ah, uh, all right, so we've given away a Porsche. Um, we've gotten some encouragement from Avi and Mr. Snyder there in California uh, to give generously. So I think it's probably time to check in on that winning photograph, right? Yes. You know, I wonder which one it's gonna be. Love all of these. Which one are you? Which one are you the most favorite of? I, I can. I, I didn't like, actually. It's like, choosing a, it's like picking a favorite child. I like them all. Can't do it without consequences that last for a lifetime. Uh, here we go. The winning. The winning photograph is. Hey! Ah. Okay. We're not gonna call Tiffany, uh, but we are going to congratulate her and hope that she is yes. watching online. So, uh, Tiffany Bleakney Brown. That is a heck of a photograph there. So congratulations to you. We'll call you later. Um, and that was certainly a lot of fun, Michael Sapienza. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and what a way to end a very special evening. Are you going to close this out now? You gonna... I, I am. Well, here's the thing. Here's what people don't realize. Before Michael started this little organization that we've all come to cherish, he was actually a professional trumpet player. Did you know this? No one knew this. What Michael doesn't know is we brought a trumpet for him tonight. It's not true. Don't get too excited, Dad. Sorry. But next it's year. It's not true. Next year he's going to play his trumpet. Lindsay made me promise earlier that next I had year. to do it next year. You're going to promise. I will do it. Pinky I, swear. It's recorded now. OK. Yeah. All right. So let's give Craig a huge round of applause, please. Thank you for what you guys do. Thank you so much. It, obviously, tonight has gone by so Quickly, I begin tonight by, you know, asking for your support and your leadership so we can get ahead of this disease. You know, the, the investment that all of you have made in the Alliance's mission is critical to realizing the next era for colon cancer prevention, patient support, and research. With your support, we can do the following, just to remind. Tackle the huge problem of health disparity disparities, strategically funding initiatives that will have the largest impact on our black and Hispanic communities. We can develop this one-stop, personalized patient navigation system for every patient and caregiver, like Lawrence, like my mom, like Michelle, meeting each person where they are with the help that they need most, and to launch this disruptive movement to make colon cancer famous, rejecting the stigma, making this disease known as the preventable cancer, and ultimately inspiring a rising tide of colorectal cancer screenings that will save lives. I know we can end this disease in our lifetime, but it will take every one of us moving forward together to realize our vision, a world free of colorectal cancer. Finally, this evening, would it be possible without our sponsors, including, as Avi mentioned, Frank and Julie Sands, yes, Jay and Lynn Ferrero, the Twyla Sampson Foundation, 
our production company, Teeth Moreau, and all of our relentless colorectal cancer staff. Yes. Give them a huge round of applause. Thank you to all of you. Thank you so very much. The Preventable Cancer. Thank you so much for what you've done tonight. Go forth and spread the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, enjoy your evenings. We'll let you get back to it. Good night.